It is good, Lord, to be here. I don't know about you, but I'm in tears just hearing Christmas carols. It has been so long since last Christmas, and so much has happened that has been so out of the ordinary for us this year. It's so wonderful to hear those Christmas carols. I haven't been shopping much this year in the mall, so I haven't heard any of that music, and so it just warms our hearts to be here now on Christmas Eve to celebrate what, we've know, what we know all along, the Lord is with us, but to celebrate God come to us in the flesh, to walk among us is, a, I think, what our hearts and our souls need at this point. So welcome to this Christmas Eve service, and I pray that you will be blessed as we worship together, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this service, we, it is going to be a candlelight service. So please, I invite you to, in your homes, to get your candles ready for when we come to that candle lighting part of the service. And we'll also be gathering around the Lord's table to celebrate Holy Communion. So if you would like to prepare your elements in your home as well for when we come to that part of the service. So let's sing a Christmas carol, shall we? Let's sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles whose flames bring warmth to our hearts and fill us with your glow of hope. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown. As we light the first candle, enlighten us with your grace and open our hearts to receive Christ with joy. We praise you, O God, for this circle of light as we light the second candle. Kindle within us the fire of your spirit 
that we may be light shining in the darkness. We praise you, O God, for this unending crown of courage as we light the third candle. Strengthen our hearts as Christ comes to us in glory. We praise you, O God, for your eternal promises. As we light the fourth candle, enlighten us with your grace so that we may share your love with our neighbors. As we light the Christ candle, we remember the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the flame of this candle remind us that you are the light of the world, and following you, we will never again walk in darkness, but will have the true light of life. As God's children, we proclaim. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. We'll now sing our Advent hymn while we are waiting. <coughs> The whole earth shouts with joy to God. The world declares God's praise. Praise to the compassionate and gracious one. Who sent the Son to dwell among us. Praise to the incarnate one, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Who fulfills God's covenant of love and compassion to all humankind. Praise to the indwelling one, the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Who proclaims God's mercy and justice throughout the earth. Praise to the three in one. Praise to the three in one. Praise to the one in three. Praise to the one in three. Praise to God on high. Oh. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray together. Almighty God, you made this holy time shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we turn to hear the word of God. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 1, sorry, wait, verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But an angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. 
when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about them, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And tag team, Pastor yes, Linda. There we go. Yes, everyone, all the, the little people in your home gather around the screen and we'll have a little fun here, I think. I hope. I'm going to have fun. <sighs> you know, I was a little rushed getting here today, so I apologize for this, but I really think I, I should just get my teeth brushed here. Oh, shoot, didn't bring any water. Oh, no, no, that's not a good idea, Linda. No, okay, well, <laughs> we'll put that there. Okay, well, at least, at least I could brush my hair. See, so look, look, does that look okay? Am I out of place anywhere? Awesome. Oh, 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 I feel good. Ah, oh, yes. Well, you know what? <sighs> Want to play a game? Want to play a game? Let's play a game. Oh, I didn't get my game out here. All right. It's a game that I love to play with my grandkids. Sorry. And you know why I love to play it so much? Makes a bunch of noise. <laughs> I never win, but it's kind of fun to play a game, isn't it? Do you, do you guys like to play games? Probably lots of kinds of games, right? And maybe there might be one under the Christmas tree waiting for you to play. Oh, I love playing games. Looks like I'm missing a green man, though. That's not good. Um, what else could we do? I know. Remember this? I shared it with you a few weeks ago. It's my favorite book, Robert the Rose Horse. Remember what happened to Robert? He was allergic to roses. So he chewed all the time and everything fell down flat. Yeah, I like reading Robert the Rose Horse. It's a good book, a good book. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Well, that was fun. Um, you know what? I'm kind of hungry. Maybe I could have an orange. <laughs> an orange would be good. Yeah, my tummy's kind of growling. Now I'm going to want to eat this, and I can't eat it with my mask on. That's terrible, but oh, yeah. <sighs> Do you love oranges? I love Christmas oranges. They're so tasty. Mm, I can't wait to get into that later. Oh, well, maybe we better just slow things down a little bit here. I brought along my coloring book. Oh, it's a... It's a um, Oh, dear me, I've lost what... Oh, Jim Henson's... Uh, Sesame Street, there we go. How long has it been? Yeah, there's lots of... And I got all my crayons here. Yeah, that's... Oh, it'll be fun to color. Do you like coloring? I love coloring, too. And I do it in the lines pretty good now. I didn't used to, but I, I'm pretty good at that now. Why did I go through all of that? It's all just ordinary, everyday stuff, isn't it? Every day we... Well, most every day we brush our hair and our teeth and sometimes we play games and color coloring books and we certainly eat every day. All that ordinary stuff that happens all the time. Did you hear the gospel story that Pastor Greg just read for us? Lots of ordinary stuff going on there too. The government is giving us orders. Mary and Joseph have to go to Bethlehem to register for the census, in other words, to go get counted. And where Mary and Joseph are riding on a donkey and she's expecting a baby. That happens all the time. Maybe there's somebody in your family who's expecting a baby. And then they get to the stable and what's in a stable? Ordinary, everyday animals, donkeys and sheep maybe. And then there's those shepherds. What are they doing? Everyday stuff out there in the fields with their sheep. And what happens? In the midst of 
all of that ordinary stuff, God shows up. The angels come to the, the shepherds. And what's, what happens in that manger? Jesus is born. In the midst of all of our ordinary stuff, in the midst of the things in your daily life, the, the playing, the laughing, the eating, the going to your room to clean it up, in all of those things, God shows up. Jesus shows up to be with us. Give thanks that in the midst of ordinary, everyday stuff, we know that God is with us. So as we come now to this Christmas Eve night and, and you're excited for the, for the presents that are under the tree and for the maybe not family that's going to gather, for, but for the celebration that you'll have in your home, give thanks that God is in the midst of all of those things today and every day. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you did come and dwell among us, that you come now and dwell among us in, in your spirit, in all of those everyday, ordinary, mundane things, and in all of the big, exciting things, too. You are with us, Lord. Thank you for the gift of the children and the joy that they bring us this time of year and, as, and all through the year. May we recognize in the the joy and laughter of those children, your very presence lifting our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Now I got to get up. <laughs> oh, without stepping on my old. There we go. Tag team. <laughs> Distraction noodle. Maybe I'll just play some games here. It's a wonderful day, wonderful time of the year for sure, this celebration of the birth of Christ. And it's amazing. I think it's amazing. And I want to talk about that. Um, you know, first I want to stop and just look at some of the things God has done. We went, walked through or went through the Advent wreath lighting, kind of with themes of hope, joy, peace, love. And so we have all four of those things there. And now today they're all burning and it's great. And we kind of walk through Advent as if, you know, they're kind of independent joy, hope, love, peace. Today, I want you to think about how amazing it is that all those things exist at one time. This is what God is bringing together in us. Hope, the joy of it, the peace, the love. How can you do all those things at once? It's only God that can do these amazing things. And I loved Pastor Linda's uh, first expression this morning. That she was, it was like it's amazing how still those gospel or those uh, Christmas carols can cut deep and have deep meaning to each and every one of us. And I, I love that reaction. Now, I have tears because of you. <laughs> but uh, it, it is amazing what God can do and is doing. Uh, when you think of the, the whole account of the everything going on, as Pastor Linda was talking about, it's amazing that all that comes together and that finally, through the prophets of the words of the prophets, through uh, the, the angel coming to Mary, that she will be with child and that she will have a baby, name him Jesus, how it all comes together, the line of David. Uh, and this amazing birth, these amazing events of angels and shepherds, it's, it's breathtaking. It, it really is when you think about putting all of that together that God has orchestrated this, made this possible, and do, has done this for us. Which is probably even more amazing because how many of us can say, like, know for sure, like, why would God want to do such a thing? I find that pretty incredible. Why would God care this much? Why would God go through all of this? Why, uh, when, when we often fail, we often go on our own ways and, and, and you know, do things that we you know, get lost in, God still comes and touches our lives and touches our lives right now, Christmas, uh, but every day of our lives truly is amazing. I uh, have 
the, the other day I talked about, I was out ice fishing till, the, till it went dark. And uh, that's commitment, I tell you. But there's a, a moon hanging in the sky, clear and bright. It was cold. The, the, the ice was just like a mirror. You know, it was just glass. And there I am standing, and I see the moon hanging in the sky. And it was breathtaking. And then as it gets darker and darker, I could see the alignment of the stars that everybody's been talking about. And it's been in the news, the alignment of Saturn and Jupiter. And Russ, if you would, uh, just these are just some of those pictures. You know, that's amazing that that hangs in the sky. And that there's moons that go around Jupiter. You see them. And, and there's Saturn with the rings. And it's, it's amazing. And then it lines up. Just It's like God showing off every once in a while. Isn't it? Isn't it amazing? The next one, Russ, they're all kind of the same. But, you know, the, the alignment of the stars. I mean, look where someone captured the beauty of the earth and the, the volcano erupting. The, the smoke, the alignment of the stars. The next one, Russ. And another one with the Milky Way and the alignment of the stars. Uh, and another one I think I have. Yes, someone captured this one. And again, you can see the moons and Saturn and, and the, the trees, the mountains in the background. This is, this is truly amazing. I hope you can take time in your life, in, in this year, in this time, to reflect on just how amazing God is and the amazing things God has done for us. And I do have a little joke. Who would I be if I didn't have a joke? All right. So, three gifts from three sons. Three sons left home, went out on their own, and prospered. So getting together for Christmas, they discussed the gifts they were able to give their elderly mother. The first said, I built a big house for our mother. Oh, the second said, I sent her a Mercedes. The third smiled and said, I've got you both beat. You remember how mom enjoyed reading the Bible? And you know she can't see very well. So I sent her a remarkable parrot that recites the entire Bible. It took elders in the church 12 years to teach him. He's one of a kind. Mom just has to name the chapter and verse, and the parrot recites it. Amazing. Soon thereafter, Mom sent out her letter of thanks. Dear Milton, she wrote one son, the house you built is too huge. I live in only one room, but I have to keep the whole house clean. And dear Gerald, she wrote to another, I am too old to travel. I stay at home most of the time, so I rarely use the Mercedes. And dearest Donald, she wrote to her third son, you have the good sense to know what your mother likes. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> oh, the best laid plans that people have and how they can go afoul, literally. Literally, this is uh, just just a little fun in there, but uh, it, it's so true that the things that we plan, the things that we do, aren't necessarily always, uh, you know, aren't how should I say, aren't as amazing as what God does, or we 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 fail, we get the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, but what God has done in Christ is certainly the right thing for each and every one of us. It's an amazing gift, undeserved. It's an um, incredible act of God that to come and, and reveal to us as we t talked about, or as we spoke about in our, in our uh, Advent liturgy, litany, the three in one, the one in three. How is that possible? But it's amazing. And we see it all coming together, God in Christ, in the world, in the Spirit, all acting together to bring us this good news. And I hope today that you will know that good news. You will hear that good news. You will see it in so many different ways, whether you're alone at, by yourself for Christmas, 
that's what I'm going to be. Uh, alone, home for Christmas, or whether it's uh, with, with your loved ones, your immediate family, that's it, though, that's it. Uh, but be with your immediate family, and may the gift of God in Christ inspire you. May you look upon it in a new way, and may it give you the strength to get through all things. This COVID thing, it's nothing. This struggles of the world, it's nothing. Because what God has given us in Christ is everything. I invite you to reflect on that Christ child today and the next days ahead and truly be amazed and inspired to, to, to look and see what God has done. And may it transform you that you would see the, the light of Christ the light, Christ as the light of the world, the one who comes to take away the sin and give us hope through all things. Merry Christmas to you, God's blessings, and may you have an amazing Christmas. Amen. Herald angels sing. This time in our worship, we generally accept the offering, but we're doing things quite a bit differently these days, aren't we? And I appreciate, Pastor Greg, for all of the reminders that you gave us of those wonderful gifts that God gives. Yeah, how does that moon hang in the sky? I don't know. How do we, how do we get through the things we do? Because God is with us. And so I, I invite you to think about all of the ways that you have been blessed by God and then that you, in turn, bless others with your gifts of caring and kindness and love. And so cherish those gifts. We certainly appreciate the financial support that you give to your church and to whatever ministry you might support. 
We give thanks for that, and we appreciate it very much. But I think the greatest gift of all is that good news that was born in a manger this Christmas Eve night. So let's sing our offertory hymn, Away in a Manger. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for others. With all of creation on earth and in heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new promise in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. All things are now ready. Please come to the table of the Lord. Take the bread, take and eat. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And the cup, take and drink. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in his grace and his mercy. Live in his peace. Amen. I invite you to return to your seats. And Russ, if you could get the lights at the back too when you thank you.
with the thought of this O oh, holy night deep in our hearts and the candle of Christ burning beside us. Let us bow our heads and hearts in prayer. Gathered with all who seek the Christ child, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need, saying, hear us, O God, and responding, your mercy is great. Wonderful counselor, on this holy night, your church throughout the world celebrates the word of God being born among us. Endow your church with a zeal for sharing your love and grace with all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of hosts, the heavens are glad, the earth rejoices, and the trees sing for joy at your coming. Grant us wisdom to care for your creation in ways that benefit all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Prince of Peace, your grace has appeared and brings salvation to all. Bring healing to people and nations divided by violence. Direct the leaders of the nations so that in self-controlled, upright, and godly living, they may work toward peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God of mercy, you come among us as a vulnerable infant. Protect all in need those without homes or caregivers, those who grieve, all who are hungry and all who are ill. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we praise you for your gathering us this day to worship in holy splendor. Direct our worship, fellowship, and service so that our lives and Christian witness may be pleasing to you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Everlasting God, your steadfast love never ends. Thank you for revealing your faithfulness and love to us through the saints of every time and place. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Into your gracious hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now join in singing Silent Night, and I invite you every time you hear the word of Christ mentioned or hear the Son of God mentioned to just raise your light a little bit as we sing Silent Night.
receive now the benediction. May the light of God shine on us. May the love of Christ shine in us. And may the life of the Spirit shine through us. Amen. Do we want the lights up again? Or we're good with just, let's just do the candles. So we'll um, go forth rejoicing with a beautiful hymn. It's an Advent hymn, actually, but joy to the world. couple of announcements as we complete our time together this day. On uh, Christmas Day, tomorrow morning, we're offering a, a service, a worship service for you, uh, and it starts at 9 a.m. It will be available online. And then also next Sunday, the 27th of uh, December, there will also be a service available at 10.30. It will be live streamed that morning. So at this point in a usual Christmas Eve service, I'd be very excited to be going out into the foyer of the church and greeting all of you and giving some hugs and handshakes and all of that stuff, but you're not here. And so I greet, with you, greet you with a hug and a ha handshake. It's been so long, I forgot which hand. Uh, as over the airways and over the, over the cyberspace. I greet you with a very, very Merry Christmas and give thanks for all of the wonderful ways that you have cared for your neighbors, that you have cared for me as your pastor, that you have cared for your family in this difficult time. So give thanks that we know in all things God is with us. So Pastor Greg, do you want to speak a word? No. All right. So on behalf of all of us here at St. Olaf, Merry Christmas to all of you. Let's go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
And thank you to all of our musicians. That was Jennifer and Jody Switzer, and Ty was playing with Jen earlier, and to Arlie on the organ, and for all of our voices that have joined in this day. So Wayne Braun, Wayne Erlinson, Kendra Brandt, Sharon Lang, and for Karen for reading, and yeah, just thank you for all of the ways that you've blessed us in this Christmas Eve service. Thank you. 